Baguettes are about as stereotypically French as you can get. I don't normally make baguettes because I can buy really good baguettes from artesian bakers, but we're in the middle of a lockdown and fresh bread is a, more of a challenge than, than usual. So I'm going to make some. And I'm really making them not because I'm craving baguettes. I'm making these baguettes because I am craving something else that's stereotypically French. We'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm going to start by hydrating my yeast. This is a really wet kind of a dough. And I need lukewarm water. And I want to see what my temperature is here. So I'm about a 105 or so, which is okay. It's a little on the warm side. I need 7 grams of yeast, which fortunately for me is a packet. A lot of people skip the step of rehydrating your yeast, and that's a mistake, whether you're baking or whether you're brewing. Rehydrating your yeast makes your yeast healthy. And it allows the yeast to gently wake up in a neutral solution. And when I say neutral in this case, what I'm talking about is actually the weight of the solution. Because water has a specific gravity of one. It's a gentle way for the yeast to wake up and for the cell walls to be healthy. If you rehydrate it in something heavier than water, such as something in the presence of sugar, or a lot of salt, then the cell walls will explode and a lot of your yeast will die and not do their job. Plus, this gives the yeast a chance to breathe and, and do some other things that makes it healthier and makes your bread rise better. It'll start to bubble in a little while and that'll tell us that it's viable and happy. And I'll go on to working on the rest of my ingredients. So I need 500 grams of, we'll call it all-purpose flour. Here it's actually type 55, which is what you generally use for bread. Now this should be a kilo bag, so it should be exactly half of this bag, but I'm still going to weigh it. Okay, I've got my 500 grams, and I want to sift it. I don't have a fancy sifter. So what I'm going to do is use this... The baguette dough is different from a lot of other bread doughs in that it's a lot wetter dough than what you, what you would think. Normally for 500 grams of flour for any other bread I would make, normally I would use about 200 milliliters of water for almost any other bread. But for, for baguettes, it's 350, so it's almost twice as much water. It's a really wet dough. And it's really important that it's going to be cooked in a steam oven as well. When we think of a baguette, we think of that iconic crust. And that comes from steam. So I'm very fortunate to have a steam oven that I can use. Now I need 12 grams of salt. I use sea salt for almost everything. Um, mostly just because I can. And I don't need to sift this. I have my flour. I have my salt. By French law, baguettes have four ingredients, flour, salt, water, and yeast. And so we are going to follow those rules. This is such a wet dough, the process for it rising and being handled from this point forward is a little different from most bread. It's going to have to be kind of folded as opposed to kneaded. Instead of a regular bread rising and then punched down and formed and allowed to rise again, this one's going to have to be worked several, several times 
Normally, I would let the bread rise. I'd punch it down, form its shape, allow it to rise again. And that would be pretty much be it. But in this case, I'm going to let it hang out until it doubles. Then I'm just going to kind of stretch it a little bit and turn it over. And I'm going to do that several times just to allow different parts of the dough to work. But I don't want to develop too much gluten. And so it's going to be handled a little differently. And it's a, where the real art of this bread comes into play. So I'm going to cover it and let it hang out. The bread is working on its first rise. It's late November in Eastern France and it's cold. I could heat the oven, turn it off and let the bread rise in there. I could put the dough on a radiator. I could put it next to my computer. There's a lot of things I could do to make the dough rise in a nice warm place. I'm not gonna do any of them. I'm gonna let this dough rise very, very slowly. It's called a retarded fermentation. And the bread develops a lot more flavor if you can give it a slow rise. If you have that kind of patience, you'll be rewarded with a better loaf of bread, in my opinion. Some people don't like that. Some people like a cleaner bread. I like a little bit of, a bit of character in my bread, and that's what I'm gonna aim for with this. Especially when you see what I'm gonna do with this bread later. So I'll come back to you after the bread's had a chance to do its thing. Okay, so I'm just back from the supermarché, and I think hopefully that was the exact right amount of time. Now I don't want to punch this down because again, this is a very liquid, wet, sloppy kind of a yeast. All I want to do is kind of pull it away from the bowl. and pull as deep as I can reach to kind of form a ball and pull the bottom parts to the top. So you see, even though it's pretty cold in here, like down around 60 Fahrenheit, the bread was happy to rise. Of course, the water was warm. So now I pulled it all away once. And of course it wants to stick again, because that's its job. And a lot of it wants to stick to me, and that's part of the job too. I'm just gonna cover it, and I'll come back to it in another probably 15, 20 minutes. We're actually gonna do that three times, which is kind of crazy, but that's how it works. Okay, we're back for our second fold. And the same as before. Just going to try to pull it off the sides first. And it's still really sticky, but not quite the same. And you see, we're starting to build a little more structure. So, again, we're just basically trying to pull off the bottom and form another ball on top. We'll give that another 15, 20 minutes. Okay, you see we've risen again. So now I'm gonna to try to turn it out of the bowl. And it's still gonna be sticky. It really wants to grab the bowl. And you can see it was really hard to get it all out. My goal here is not to add a lot of flour except for just what I need to, to make this dough workable. I am going to have to cut it in half, because hopefully I can get two baguettes out of this. And I don't want to try to pull it in half, because it's really just not going to work. So it's really, really a lot of slime. like ectoplasm now. I know it's hard to understand this now. We 
aren't always meant to know the reasons why things happen. I'm just trying to. Sometimes the French call this a portfolio fold. Basically, just trying to fold it onto itself. But I'm really not trying to knead it. gadget isn't absolutely necessary, but it sure does make it easier. Alright, still being pretty careful not to need, but you see we're getting, we st we're definitely going to have to punch down. So I want to flatten it out, punching down the big bubbles, which those big bubbles are really part of the character of what we're making and we're going to do a portfolio fold so it's thirds and I'm actually at the when I get to the ends here I actually like to pull them over a little bit I'll tell you one thing about the universe though and I want to squeeze it down and try to keep the right shape You can see the bubbles just really, really wants to go. And this pan is going to help hold its shape as it rises, and it's going to help guide that, guide that shape. Okay. So again, I'm going to flatten it down, try to punch out some of those big bubbles, let it make new ones. Any way the fates choose. That's not up to me. But what is within my power is to decide how I live, courageously or timidly. That first one formed nicely, but this one's fighting me a little bit. But I really need the stereotypical French food to make another stereotypical French food that I actually like even more than this. And that we could eat in the camping car, or at least we could if we weren't in the middle of a confinement. Alright. I'm going to let this rise and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the oven. I don't think this is going to take too long. Yeah, the dough has risen pretty well, filled the forms. That one's perfect and this one that I had a little more trouble with is not perfect but it'll still taste good I'm going to go into the steam oven it's at 230 degrees I'm going to go ahead and cut it down to 220 uh, that's Celsius I'm going to add my water We are in. 15 minutes later, hopefully we'll have a beautiful day. Means maybe my oven isn't as even as I thought it was. Look at those cool snails. 
These are the big helix nails. And what I like to do is take some of my garlic butter out of the freezer. I'm going to melt this in the microwave. The way I cook them at home is with these dishes. really could be simpler. This is the classic way that's done everywhere between Burgundy, where, where they're from, and uh, which isn't far from Alsace where I live. And you can get this in almost any restaurant around here done this way. This is local Alsatian pottery. And you put the just a snail in a pool of the compound garlic butter with some chopped parsley on the top. I probably won't bother with the parsley. But now I have those set aside. This isn't going to really work for camping for me because I don't have an oven. It won't fit in my Omni oven because it's not donut shaped. But what will work for camping for me will be to skewer them and put them on a baguette. So I'm going to start with a mushroom. Put a mushroom and a snail. Cocktail onion and I guess I'll just keep going. You could add pieces of pepper. You don't have to put the mushrooms on if you don't want to. Usually when I'm at the market, I buy big mushrooms. This time I was actually looking for the smaller ones. This is actually the first way I ever had escargots. A really fancy resort restaurant on Sanibel Island. Uh, somehow managed to get a job at even though I didn't know much about cooking at that time. Garlic butter is nicely melted. I already have everything in this garlic butter that I need to make it to make it yummy. It's a compound butter. And if you search my videos, you'll find video about compound butters. I have to let them cool. It's a big mistake with meat or bread to, to slice it before it's cooled enough. Let it rest, let it finish cooking, and otherwise all of your moisture is just going to evaporate. So we'll come back to it in just a few minutes. I've waited as long as I can stand it. I'm going to slice the baguette and finish this preparation for the camping car. I wish. It's wishful thinking to say it's going in the camping car since really camping is not allowed right now. I'm still, we're still in the block I'm going to try to cut it in half. It smells a little doughy. Okay. 
So that's what it, the baguettes want to do. They want to make those big pockets because it's not really needed. Drop a mushroom in that big pocket. And we're going to pour the garlic butter right over the top. And I'm going to add just a little bit of of clarified butter to this jar that still has a lot of garlic in it and melt it in the microwave because I don't I could have more butter on this it's amazing how much garlic aroma came out of that Put it in the refrigerator and pop it out as a really nice snack. Because all I have to do is cook it until it browns. The snails are already cooked, the bread's cooked, the butter's okay, the mushrooms are okay, those are fine, octolines are ready to eat. So all I really have to do to make this appetizing is to get it warm. Hot, wet, dry, or oily. If it goes on a plate, it goes on a plate. I don't know where that one went. Oh, it must have exploded. Found it. Because of science.